It's snowing for the first time in a while where I live, can someone post spooky winter green texts? Context is a hamlet, 100 people, in a rural area, prairie land. Parents' house is about 5 kilometers away from the town which is a one street strip of little shops, post office, because there's no mailman, most houses near theirs are abandoned slash boarded up, and there's only, six or seven houses on their stretch of road. House sitting for parents a few winters ago, old farmhouse, I hate it, but mom offered to stock house with groceries in exchange. All right then. Home alone for week and a half. Upstairs kitchen looks out over backyard with big windows and sliding glass doors. Hole myself up in the basement. Mostly play music and TV real loud to distract myself from getting spooked. Psyching myself out thinking stuff like man, that'd be creepy if something happened. Do this for three days, barely go upstairs, jumping at shadows. Good job retard. Big snowfall overnight, still snowing steadily. Keeps snowing big heavy flakes throughout day. Upstairs for breakfast. Look out over yard and see tons of crisscrossing animal tracks. That's... Fine. Rabbits, deer, maybe even coyotes. Haven't been near the front part of the house in days. Wander over to see what's it's like in the front yard. The hell. No animal tracks. One set of footprints that come halfway to the front door then stop. Not turned around, just dead stop. Get a bunch of food and hole up in basement running it over in my head. Think maybe it was a delivery man who made a mistake, turned around halfway up walkway. Rethink. Was I sure the footprints just stopped or did my brain just fill in the blanks and jump to conclusions? Yeah that's probably it. Turn on every light in the house. Get drunk to try and settle my nerves. Wake up next morning on couch, lights still all on. It's freezing. Go upstairs. Thermostats set to 10. Bundle up and wait for house to heat up and nurse hangover. Still thinking about footprints. Pound what little of the rums left over for confidence and get dressed for weather. Footprints go dead straight across the road and into empty field. Stop following them after about a kilometer. Prints still going dead straight. Nothing in distance but more flat ass prairie. Speed walk back to house, check all windows, locks on doors. Snow still falling heavy filling tracks in. Hide back downstairs. Parents back in four more days. Stay up most of the night, keep pausing music slash TV because I keep thinking I hear hushed voices and the crunching of snow outside. Sleep erratically that night, waking up super disoriented. Next morning don't even want to look outside but can't help it. Out back new animal tracks litter yard but none cross one set of footprints that come up all the way to the sliding glass door of the kitchen and then stop. Stand staring at last footprint leading up to door for indeterminate amount of time, thinking about how little it would take to break the glass. Look out over rest of yard maybe just someone messing with me. Notice animal tracks all run around in tight semi-concentric circles slash spirals like flies buzzing around a light source, but they're cleaved in half like a hairline by those footsteps all the way to the horizon, not a single one will cross those footsteps. Haven't even checked front yard yet. Just realized I can see my breath. Readjust thermostat. Parents always set it low when they go away probably scheduled to reset back to that temperature every day, I try fiddling with it, think I might have got it to hold at a decent temperature. Taking mind off front yard. Go get a blanket and wrap around myself. Wander around house half-assedly checking for other signs of attempted break-in or entry. Snow's still dumping. Look out front and get it over with. Have to piss. Look out front and get it over with. Teeth feel furry, haven't brushed in days, 
no bathroom downstairs. Look out front and get it over with. Front yard has me in near hysterics, I force back the tears I can feel stinging the rims of my eyes. I bunch up the blanket in my mouth and scream and bite down and gnash my teeth against scratchy cotton. Compose myself to examine, bite down on my knuckles and stare at it for a good five minutes to try and compute. In the middle of the yard about 10 meters across are a series orbits traced in the snow like the rings of electrons in the Rutherford atomic model. If this was one person then it must have taken all night, the tracks are not just one pass but tens of them, stamping down the snow to form an uninterrupted ring, like they had shuffled their feet instead of walking, or passed so many times that it achieved the same effect. Think spirograph, pick related, vaguely what mine looked like. Similar story to mine. Taking care of a friend's house while on break from uni. Small countryside place with only a couple of dozen people spread out over 20 miles. Nearest civilization is a gas station just off of the highway east of me. After that it's at least a 40-minute drive to the nearest grocery store. Writing this as I watch the sun crest just under the trees, already around dash 10 F and has been all day. I would take a picture but my phone is dead and the nearest charger is upstairs in my sleeping area and I'm not prepared to make the trek upstairs. Alone apart from a dog and female friend sometimes. Spending my time working on an old truck and reading slash playing video. First nights not feeling spooked at all. Not my first time being alone out in the middle of nowhere. Still pretty warm Disu. It's an old farmhouse. Owner says it's one of the oldest out here. Various parts of the house have been remodeled at different points and in different styles over the last 100 years or so. Very cobbled together and hodgepodge, especially the newer solutions to the ailments of an aging home. I hole up in the top floor as it's easier to heat. Four other bedrooms and most of my crap is in just one of them. Don't have much with me but there's this gigantic glass topped oaken desk. Set up new 4K monitor and toaster desktop. Speakers, like new mattress dragged in from other room. My clothes, enough food to keep me a couple of weeks at least. One iffy satellite internet connection and a mini 14 with one full magazine and another 60 or so rounds in a box. Very cozy, living the dream. Still warm enough to walk to dog around and we explore the farm. Rummaging through the barns and not much there. Someone used to work as a plumber, maybe for the locals. Other barn used to store cattle but the roof is caving in and at night you can hear some of the aluminum roof panels clattering to the ground in sharp gusts of wind. At most have to go check on some bump in the night noise that usually ends up being clattering ice or get woken up by the clattering boom of an aluminum roof panel come crashing down. Sometimes I can hear cars on distant freeway but most nights there's nothing but bitter silence. Never know if some yokel might have cracked before me out here and is just waiting to drop a brick on some unsuspecting sleeping college. Keep my gun loaded and somewhere handy. First few weeks go by smooth. A little bit of Buna's paranoia but no major incidents. Christmas is suddenly around the corner. Time for drinking. Significantly colder than when I first got here. Sun is starting to set so the wind is picking up. Sitting outside with my dog. Nursing a bottle of Gigermeister sitting on the porch studying the animal tracks and watching my dog piss on the various dead plants and bushes. Suddenly hear a thundering truck coming down the road, first person I've seen all day. It's a tow truck. He drives steadily by. I know he can see me but I can't see him in the cab at all. Watch him go by and listen to see if he turns. Nope he's straight on through and I lose him somewhere in the distance. As I'm eyeing the direction he went in I suddenly see a light just over the treetops. Kind of like a star I don't think anything of it as it hangs in the sky but I watch it for a minute. Start to realize that it's not shaped like an undefined twinkling star but has a clear egg shape to it. 
It's not nearly as far away as I thought at first and it appears to be just over top of the tree lean to my southeast. It begins to move. Slowly but then gaining speed slowly but gaining speed in the direction of the truck. Instantly start making assumptions about it being a drone after having been exposed to drones. It's making no sound and is varying speed. Sometimes seems to come to a halt as if hovering. Only they would have to be releasing a drone near dusk in uninhabited farmlands in mid-December on a winter night. Still take it as the most likely candidate. Another possible candidate being a misidentified aircraft at a further distance than I'm assuming. But then he'd have to be turning into me and away from me erratically so as to appear to hover at times. Whatever it was as it was about to descend back down into the trees and it stopped moving. Starts flashing various colors and patterns. Red, flash 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 three times in a triangle. Blue slowly fading to white, and then white breathing in and out faster and higher in intensity every time. Once it was flashing quickly it slowly got dimmer and dimmer until I could no longer see it. Still not sure about what conclusions to draw. Retreat into the house just to be sure some FUD with a drone isn't going to come play spy on me and my little bottle of liquor. Or whatever it was. Spend some time watching for planes flying in and out of that direction, and the kind of noises the planes are making. Even some of the most distant aircraft I see coming from my northwest I can hear in the winter silence. Some time goes by and after a while I forget about it almost entirely. Christmas rolls around. Female friend comes over and we do what people do locked up alone together in a farmhouse. Too soon she's leaving and I'm with my dog again. Darkness comes just after 5 p.m. and I'm spending less time in the outer parts of the cold house and more time in the warm core upstairs with my computer. Some weeks go by. Get a visit from an associate of the owner of the house to come check up on me and the farm. Nice to see person after so long on a mess of a satellite internet connection basically crippling my ability to socialize online. After greetings and fraternizing they ask me how I'm holding up. Pretty creepy out here sometimes, I couldn't stand it. Seems fine to me. They leave me with some supplies. Food, toiletries, some winter clothing, a set of tools I asked for and a little water pipe for some hash. After they leave really feel the loneliness set in. At least my dog is here. A little cowardly dog who isn't really good for anything. Decide to spend some of my time working on the truck. Only vehicle I have and it has some issues so might as well spend my free time working on it. A little nervous to be out in the middle of nowhere working on a vehicle. Sneaking feeling that someone could just walk up to me without me knowing. Always have the dog hanging around and the Mini 14 on a strap somewhere. Linkage plate is totally wrecked. Tools end up being basically useless. God damn this sucks. Work on rigging some crap together. Suddenly hear very quietly. Sounds like a woman's voice. Shoot bolt upright having not heard another person for days. Trying to figure it out. Sounds like she's singing but I can't make out what she's saying. Gets a little louder. Can't tell where it's coming from at all. The echo makes it seem like it's coming from everywhere all at once. Suddenly silence. My dog had noticed and now he's ears back looking up to me for guidance. I'm sure the look on my face was of no comfort. Go looking around for it. Dog is reluctant to go and tries to hide in the truck. Cowardly dog. Check inside to see if I had left music on somewhere. Everything is dead silent. All I can hear is the heating system slowly purring away. Pack up all my things from outside. Lock myself up back inside. Too cold to work anymore. My dog can't understand English. Wouldn't be so unnerved if the dog wasn't confirming all of the things I had heard. Turns out this would become a common pattern to what's driving my fear living here. 
I might as well fast forward to my current predicament. I didn't realize how long-winded I was being but as it turns out I'm insatiably bored and high-strung at the moment. No longing staying upstairs. Moved my desktop downstairs to another large desk. No bed here but I'll cross that road when I get to it. Getting dark and my only light is this TV and some Christmas lights I found. There's something upstairs. It started in the attic, a little door across the hall from me. One night without warning a kind of scratching sound. Loud and repetitive scratching so loud it woke me out of my sleep. Normally dog starts barking at a noise before it wakes me up. He's silent. Not only silent but hiding in a corner. Cowardly dog. It must be some kind of small animal. All I get is fear and bewilderment. Come on let's go find out. I open the door to listen and size it up. As I do I hear a kind of huffing noise. Like someone scoffing. And silence. Holding still I'm listening hard to size it up. Suddenly the door handle starts turning aggressively. Intentionally. It's only staying closed because on my side there's a little nail and a hook keeping it shut. I throw something at it. If it's a small animal it'll scamper away at the sound. The sound stops. Dead silence. I get the impression I'm being listened to as much as I'm doing the listening. A quiet rhythmic tapping. Like knuckles on wood. Knock knock knock. I throw something again. Silence. Some weird animal this is. Go grab the flashlight and the gun. Don't want to put a hole in the house but freak it I want to keep my skin if need be. Go without hesitation. Open the door. Nothing, no signs of animals, no noises, no feces. No holes in the walls or cold drafts, no scampering when I entered. Clean front to back. The only thing in there is a new looking safe. Probably to keep the owner's recreational drugs when he's living here. I even plopped the dog down in there to have a look around. Nothing. A couple days later. What started only in the night is now happening during the day. No long just the door handle jiggling. Woke up and found some objects from downstairs sitting in front of my door. Some weird animal this is. Decided today once it started tapping to tap back. Waited until it started again knock knock knock. After a minute of silence a quiet knock 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 in return in the same pattern. Instantly spooked. The dog notices I'm tapping and stops to listen. I do a more complex pattern with a little swing step. Knocking reply, in the same swing step. Same exact pattern. Dog looks at me, obviously spooked wide-eyed. He's bounding up on me trying to get me to stop. I continue. We go back and forth, each complex response giving me little starts and shivers. The dog is basically begging me at this point. After a while it stops. I hear this noise, kind of like a high-pitched groan. Almost insect-like. It's like it comes out of the air all around me. The dog is experiencing sheer terror. I do as well momentarily. Suddenly get I'm locked in here with you feeling. Hear a sudden burst of wailing on the attic door and obvious attempts to open it at the door handle. Standing at the top of the stairs looking at the door. Rifle at the ready. Dog is downstairs hiding. It stops. I start saying things like stop out loud. When I do it responds by jiggling at the door handle. It's unafraid whatever it is. Currently hold up downstairs. It's been a couple of hours since then. The sun has completely set. Been hearing thudding around upstairs in the rooms while I've been typing this. These are new sounds. I phone someone in to come check up on me. If nothing else a third party can at least alleviate my suspicion that I've just gone insane. 
This is my first post ever on here so I might mess some stuff up. Not entirely sure how to green text but I will give it a shot. First a little backstory. I live in a rural area of Pennsylvania but not the middle of BFN. I have neighbors close by but they are all older and not up much past 9 p.m. This story is going to start in the middle of summer but winter is when it gets weird. Be me about mid-July. It's the middle of the night sleeping in bed. Suddenly wake up or so I thought. There are three doors in my room. The one on the far right side of the room is hanging wide open. I know that door was closed it is always closed. Mind must be playing tricks and close my eyes again. Wake up suddenly again an hour or so later. Light in the corner of the room through the door is on. That's odd because it isn't plugged in or anywhere near a plug. I must be dreaming. Close my eyes and drift back to sleep. Wake up suddenly a couple hours later. The door is still open and light is still on but this time there is a huge black figure about 7 to 8 feet tall standing in the doorway blocking some of the light. It has long arms down past its knees. Long talons. Red eyes and a thick black mane that stuck straight up. Must still be asleep and pay no mind closing my eyes again. Only about 30 seconds go by. My eyes are forced open by this thing. I can't freaking move and it is hovering right above me. It's coming it says in a very low bassy voice. WTF is coming? But I can't speak either. Wake up to my wife shaking me asking what's wrong. I'm drenched in sweat and shaking. It was just a bad dream. It continues about once a week until about two weeks ago. Now fast forward to Friday night. I take my dog out on a leash to go to the bathroom. It's about 10.30 p.m. or so. Start hearing noises from just inside the tree line about 50 yards or so from me. It's just some animal searching for food in the snow I guess. Then there is this smell that I can only describe as rubber-coated copper wire in fire. That's odd nobody is awake right now that I can see. Dogs start to flip crap all of the sudden. I see something moving just inside of the tree line. It's about 7 to 8 feet tall judging by a mound of dirt at the end of my yard. Moving almost statically. It looks at me with piercing red eyes. I'm freaking freezing my balls off but I can't turn around and go back inside. I'm just mesmerized by those red eyes. After what feels like hours my dog bumps my leg and I come back to. I walked back in and just tell myself that I was tired that was all. The next night rolls around and it is around 11 pm. I take my dog outside. As soon as I walk out the back door I see a man standing in the middle of my yard. Dog hasn't yet noticed him. That's odd it's like 10 degrees out and snowing heavily and he is only wearing underwear. I call out asking who it is and if they are okay. No reply. About this time my dog notices and starts flipping crap. I get the same smell from last night and don't understand. What the hell is going on? Getting irritated at this man trespassing and not answering me I repeat myself. Again no answer. My dog stops barking so I look down at him. I look back up to see this man shift into the same red-eyed creature that I saw yesterday. I see more clearly now. The red eyes, the long arms past the knees, the four-inch talons, the thick black mane. What the actual hell is that? Are you okay? In a distorted human-like voice. Who are you? Dog starts to whimper and whine. It takes a step and I turn around and book it inside. I grab my shotgun loaded with a few slugs and go back out. Nowhere to be seen. I walk up and see very strange almost human-like three-toed feet with long nails. I go out the next morning but to nothing due to the snowfall from the night before. Needless to say I will not go outside at night without my .45 anymore. Snowmageddon 2010
snowed in with three feet of snow. Area doesn't encounter this much snow this often and is busted. Roads unplowed, everyone's walking. Have to walk to McDick's get food for family as we didn't prep. Get to McDonald's and notice there's an awful amount of seagulls slash birds out here. Go inside, buy my tendies, 15 dbl cheeses and chicken burgers and give fries. Go back outside, pop me open a burger in the freezing outside and start munching. Seagulls take notice and begin to take flight upon a single call. They swarm overhead, at least 30 of them, swooping down for my burger, I start fall out three jumping through the snow, trying to get away in my panic. I fall, bag rips, and my burgers spill out. I must sacrifice a few to save myself. I get away after getting bit a few times and chased for almost 30 minutes. I have one that I'm still at a loss as to what happened. This was four years ago in rural Indiana. Small party at friend's uncle's house he's house sitting for four of us there. Everyone getting wasted up decide to stay sober just in case we need to go somewhere. Friend's grandma just died in the bathroom. Find out the house has been in the family since 1800s. Small family cemetery 500 feet away from house by barn. Both interested in paranormal because bored. Time to investigate. Call out his grandma from the house. Nothing happened. Best bet is to try to newly renovated barn next to the cemetery. Go outside to find three inches of snow and more coming. Inside the barn start calling out for someone to show themselves. No answer. All right, screw you. Call ghosts worst names I can think of. Friend doesn't say anything. Heard some weird creaks in the hayloft. Friend leave, putting me alone. I wait, and hear what sounds like large footsteps from above. No pussy dot jpeg. Everyone comes out for a sig. Back door where we smoke is positioned to where you can't see the front yard, see pick. See light coming from front yard. Friends think it's other friends dad. Light turns on and off several times. Everyone runs inside I stay out to finish my smoke. Try to door. They locked it. Light turns on. One, two, three, and off. One, two, three, and on. Stays on. K. Go check it out. Motion sensor light is on, no car in driveway. Go inside, tell friend motion sensor light is turning on and off. He's confused. Tells me there's no motion sensor light outside says it's on a switch on the patio. We go check it out. No footprints anywhere around the house. Switch is flipped to on. We flip it off again. Rest of the night is uneventful. 2005. Living in a campground in Lake Louise, Alberta, early April. Campground is empty, but surrounded by electrified, five feet bare fence for grizzly. Second night there I wake up, because I can hear something outside my tent. I realize after a minute or so that it's a hoof. It's a hoof around six inches from my head, and it just rising and letting itself fall. It's absolutely not stamping, just rising and then falling. I'm petrified. An unnatural fear, and I could feel its eyes on me through the tent. I swear that this thing was cognizant and intelligent. I've run into deer in the wild, and this thing was not that. I light some candles and my flashlight and huddle in the center of my tent until I fall asleep. Then on the third night it happened again. Only this time, there were two entities. I am 100% positive it wasn't just one entity raising both its front hoofs one after the other. There were absolutely two of them this time, and I could feel their intelligence. I lit a candle of St. Jude and huddled in the center again. I prayed all night and fell in and out of sleep. When I woke up, 
they had moved a giant log used to cut firewood around five feet in front of my tent. I could tell it was meant to be an altar for an offering. I didn't spend another night there. Picture only slightly related. 19. Got dumped by GF, been dating since we were 16, woe is me. Best friend has family problems so we organize trip up north to family farm. Farm's been in dad's side of the family for a few hundred years, getting sold in the new year so me and best bud are gonna stay there and make a start cleaning it up. Dad, uncles and grandpa told me about the place, like freaking Skinwalker Ranch. Weird lights, dangerous animals and animal attacks, crazy house nearby. Haunted Woods especially Haha. Haha is ghost of farmer that haunts weird stagnant pond area. Used to beat his wife and kids, chased them into woods, cried out where ya goin'. And was laughing before slipping, and cracking his skull on rocks. Now people hear where ya goin'. And laughter in that area. Mum doesn't want me to go but dad says yes so long as I take some guns emergency satellite phone and keep my wits about me and take it serious. Yes Papa. Best Bud and I are solid, tell him what's what and he knows the deal. Stock up on supplies, guns in cases in trunk, satellite phone in pocket. Head out, driving for days, eventually get there. Snowy but not too bad, gonna get worse. Get into the house place is a hoarder's paradise, furniture, curios, papers everywhere. Start cleaning up. First couple of weeks everything's fine. Weird noises from woods but don't go near them. Neighbor and family friend comes to check on us every now and again, talked about the area and haha. Cleared out backyard and cut back a lot of overgrowth around perimeter fence. Starts snowing. Head indoors, keep fire going. Fall asleep. Wake up. Friend asks if I was up during the night. Nope. Says he heard weird noises outside. Check outside. Branches, planks, brush we stacked have been tossed around and garbage has been looked through. Think it's a deer or pig or something. Cleaning it up. No animal tracks in sight but snows went mushy. Start clearing small barn, open doors. Beat up old tractor, bunch of tools and stuff like sheet metal and like fence posts. Dig pit in backyard and have redneck fire, diesel poured on branches and plants can pit and torched. Friend suggests we drive fence posts and sticks into ground and make little post epic fortified house. LOL why not? Take us a while but we get it done. Little spiky backyard and some of the trash in the front yard provides pretend cover. Lock up, eat fod and settle for the night with old VHS tapes. Weird noises again outside, like birds screeing but the occasional really loud scream and pig squealing. Heard haha or what sounds like haha on a few occasions. Also gunfire has increased in area at night. The next few days and nights it's the same deal. Clean up property during the day, heard funny noises at night. Except for one night. Cleaned out one of the upstairs rooms, old busted bed and cabinets, mad crap like stuffed lobster, giant crab fighting wooden ship. Onto the fire. Fire's still burning outside but it's late at night. Get carried away and LARPing in my head that we're in post apic fortified farmhouse. Peek round side of wall and look through netted curtain out window. What the hell? Something in the distance. Sneak back to hall and ask friend to come look. He does, peeks out window side through curtain. I shine on tree lean. We watch it as it watches the property or us, maybe. Both struggle to sleep that night. Next morning. Yard is a mess again. Some of the stakes in the ground are tipped over or cracked. Friend is nervous. Big tracks in deeper snow, 
can't make them out but bipedal. Breakout guns, double barrel shotgun, mini point one four and lever action. Clean up, fixing parts of fence near woods. All the we feels like we're being watched. Dead silence, real eerie feeling like two hands are inch away from back and are slowly going from butt to shoulders. Swear I hear a little girl in the distance but going nowhere near those woods. Set up cans and metal at barn door. Shoot crap with guns. Not long after a couple of the farmers with family friend drop by acting weird asking if everything's okay and what's up. Tell them we're just shooting crap. Tell family friend we saw something weird in the distance the night before. They say it's rabid wolf and if we see it again I've to phone him. Don't believe him but okay I will. Few nights later, snow's much heavier now. Put furniture in front of doors and settle down. Manage to sleep. Next morning. Friend gives me a shake. Asks me if I heard stomping outside last night. Yes. Goes to make coffee. Calls on me. Run downstairs. Kitchen window has mucky finger lines on them and deep prints in the yard leading to back porch. Screw this. Go back to barn, get some more timber and a bit sheet metal, lay down the two bear traps in the backyard. Barricade ourselves indoors, furniture pushed against doors, move our stuff upstairs. Week of normality. Till one night. Struggling to sleep. Peek out window. Something crawling in backyard, black shape. Comes close to the house. Sneak through and wake friend. Gently open window. Hear this horrible noise. Sniffing followed by a break but it made a noise. Sniff sniff ah uh, sniff sniff ah. Uh, uh. Scaring the crap out of us. Friend gets one million candle strength lights from the side of bed. Shout hey then flip on torch. Thing runs. Bipedal and black with black hair on its back and shoulder area can't see the head it's hunched. Fire shotgun at it. Hit it but it's still going. Grab rifle and shooting like mad at it. Friend runs to other window and shoots too. Makes off into trees. Screams as it enters forest. Nasty scree, scream like two angle grinders colliding. Phone family friend. As I phone him he's in his truck on his way. Truck pulls up in driveway. Locals pile out like some militia armed with rifles and shotguns and a couple of dogs. They check the garden and off the go after it. Tell them it was the wolf. Family friend and his wife stay with us. Talk to him on our own and say what I saw. Tells me they know about it and have killed one so far but don't know how many are out there. No luck. Friend and I book into hotel. Dad and uncles come up to see what's going on. Family friend talks to them, I also chime in but they listen more to the old man. Uncles and dad stay, uncles prepped with firearms and knives. No more activity on the property. Strength in numbers maybe? Regardless there was no more activity on our property and we sold the farm as soon as we could. Be me. 9. Live in Bumfuck Nowhere, Pennsylvania. Massive freaking blizzard in the first winter up there. Blizzard hits, didn't have heaters so stepmom makes siblings and I sleep in the same bed for warmth. After a brief skirmish I get the short end of the stick and have to sleep on the outside of the bed. 2 a.m. and I wake up hearing creaking. Open eyes and hear a creaking coming from the basement steps and then to the normal staircase. And then in the hallway. Squint eyes to avoid letting this thing know I'm awake. By that point my grandpa had let me watch ten horror movies behind my parents' back, I knew how that crap worked. I can barely make out whatever this thing was. It looked like a woman, but with a really torn and disheveled dress. Its breathing is all raspy and sore, but its eyes. 
its eyes looked like two silver dots. The thing is just staring at us in bed, and then creaks back downstairs to the basement. The next day I asked my brother did stepmom get up to do something last night. He says nah she was there. Her boobs were pressing against my back, couldn't sleep properly. Freakout.jpg The next night it comes back. Instead of watching us from the hallway it walks up and starts to put its hand on my forehead. Ice freaking cold. I'm trying my best to not start screaming my head off but it just stayed like that for an hour. Thing finally goes back into the basement. Dad comes home from work the next day with a bunch of heaters. Thing never came back that blizzard. I got my own room that year and closed my door every night. The next few blizzards in that house I had the creaking outside of my door again. Be me in mid-June. Kong flu has destroyed my employment and thus destroyed my last reason to remain in my shit show of a town so I decided to move somewhere less populated for the time being. Remember about this small town in the northern part of the US that my family used to visit during winter. It was somewhat populated in the summer but almost everyone left during the winter season. Begin packing bags. Move to a tiny community about 30 minutes away from said town. Right away more peace. Nobody wears a mask and there is a surprising amount of girl for a town that is basically in the middle of nowhere. Few months roll by and the talks of the second wave start up. Liquor control tells bar owner that he either closes at 10 or closes for good. Lightbulb overhead. JPEG. Start digging a fire pit in my yard. Get some nice sturdy benches. Next week it starts snowing. All according to plan. PNG. Shovel all the snow in my yard into a circle around the fire pit and benches. Stack that crap seven feet tall. Test the fire pit on a cold night. The snow reflects the heat perfectly, making the inside of the circle blazing hot while the outside remains in the negatives. It's perfect. Start going back out to the bar around seven and start chatting up a girl. 10 p.m. Go time. Bar owner begrudgingly lets us all know it's final round. Tell Stacy, hey, I got an igloo and more drink at my place. She's in. Bring her back to the snow fort and light up a blazer. The temp goes from cold to hot almost right away. She eventually gets too hot and starts to peel off her layers of clothes. I do the same. Ya you know where this is going Don Cha. WEBM. Next morning. Holy freak it worked. Repeat the same scheme every night scoring on most of them. Weekend rolls around and it's supposed to be a huge storm, local news is saying to stay off the roads and bunker down. I get cocky. Invite all the girls from the last few days to come wait out the storm in my fort. Get three of them. Stacy, Barbara, and Jenny let's say. Get to the fort right as the big storm is about to start. Fire gets going and right away Barbara goes topless. Other girls poke fun at her but it's not long before we're all partial and or fully naked drinking and having a good time. Wind is whistling like hell and the clouds completely block the stars, only light in miles is my porch lights and the fire. Stacy perks up hey and on. I dare you to go turn off that light, but no putting your coat on. Not wanting to seem beta in front of three topless girls I decide to. I step out into the cold and dark and instantly regret this decision. Balls are inside me the wind shreds against my exposed member and the snow makes my feet red as ruby. Run as fast as I can to the porch and get to the switch but realize there are lights on inside the house. Not changing it. MP3. Run inside and turn off every light in the house before slamming the porch light off. Make the painful walk back. It's so dark I can barely see the glow of the fire from the entrance to the circle and slip several times making it back. Couldn't see three feet ahead of me. Make it back and see the girls are all fully undressed now. Mood flips from sour to euphoric right away. 
bang two of them while one gets off being fingered. Feels good men. Sexy times end and we all relax around the fire. Barbara suddenly sits up. Did y'all hear that? Nobody else heard that. She seems a little worried so I assure her it's just the wind. Not having it. She gets dressed and asks if we could watch her as she goes to her car. Rest of us shrug and do so, she leaves without much issue besides the low visibility. Settle back into the seats when Stacy says she has to pee. Tell her to just piss around the side of the fort because the house isn't lit up. While she's out there me and Jenny start feeling up for round two. About ten minutes into a BJ we notice Stacy still isn't back. Barbara's freak out looms in the back of my head as we decide to go make sure she didn't slip or something. We circle the fort and can't find her. Well should maybe she went inside? There's still no lights on in the house. Start to call her name but we know it would be impossible to hear with the wind howling as loud as it was. We both get very worried as she's undressed and very drunk in a blizzard. Turn our phone lights on but the snow is blowing so hard it was like turning on high beams in a snowstorm, made it even harder to see because snow was reflecting light. Call her name out in panic. Nothing. Decide that given the risks involved it was best to call police. Check my phone but there is no service because we're in the middle of a blizzard. I just moved here and haven't gotten a landline yet. Figure if we turn on my car's headlights we might be able to see her. Run out to car while Jenny stays in the fort. Turn on car and drive it onto my yard, looking for her trail with what little visibility it offered. See a small bit of yellow on the snow closer to my house than the fort. See a big long trail of smashed down snow leading away from the yellow towards the tree line on the edge of the property. This is bear country. This is grizzly bear country. Oh hell no. Floor it to the tree line pull right up to it. Can't see anything. Get out of car to go look. Make the biggest mistake of my life. Despite the roaring whines I was still somehow worried I wouldn't be able to hear her over the car engine. Turn engine off leave lights on. Sprint into the woods yelling her name. Don't hear anything back. Really panicking at this point I run around for probably half an hour in the freezing cold looking for her, but staying in the light because I was scared for myself. Notice the light is getting dimmer. Realize my terrible lapse in judgment. Run to car to try and start it. Turn key. Turns over for half a second before the battery fully dies and the lights go out. F. Get out of car start heading back to fire get to fire and jenny is not there start to look for her calling her name see her car is still there see red spot in the snow by her car no 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 start to take a step towards the driveway when i see it lurching out just a little from the side of my house right next to the car two reflective orbs in the snowstorm it was not a bear. About five feet tall while leaned over. Massive thing with huge bulbous looking shoulders. Kind of lopsided. It stares at me as I stare at it. It moves around the corner again. My body is telling me to make a break for the house when I realize something. It's right by the side of my house where the steps to the patio are. The patio is too high for me to quickly climb up. The only cars are far away from the fort. If I run for my car it'll either not make it or freeze inside of it by morning. It has me. It's been seven hours now. The sun should have been up by now but the storm is still going and it's still so dark out. Still no phone service, it's about to die. The fire seems to be somewhat safe, as it has not come bursting through the snow walls yet, but. I hear it. I hear it right outside of the fort, lumbering around, making so much noise with its steps that I can hear it through the storm. I hear it. And I'm almost out of wood.
what was this slash x slash b1998 winter northern michigan one foot of snow playing with rc car in kitchen at night front door is glass with the shades pulled down and the handle locked it starts shaking like someone is trying to get it forcefully the handle is going up and down even though it's locked run away to parents room get my dad to go look he said he heard it but didn't see the handle move like i did there are no tracks outside no possible way to reach handle without making tracks unless you climbed on the roof i guess he thinks it was a demon or some crap i guess it had to be a bird but i can't explain why the handle was going up and down i live in lima peru when i was 18 i used to drive out of town and went to my family's summer house which is 97 kilometers south of lima i always took a rural road so i won't have pay for the highway toll which is freaking expensive this rural road crosses a little town called Luran, which is known for having largest cementeries and some wooden areas. One day me and my girlfriend decided to go to the house during winter cause nobody would be there to disturb us, the problem is that during winter this roads are lonely as hell. We were driving down this rural roads close to 10 pm, and we noticed a man side of the road waving his hands like trying to get our attention so i decide to pull over in order to help him girlfriend says i should stay in the car since it could be a mugger trying to rob us i should have listened to her because what i saw that day still messes up with my mind and everything i know was logical as i approached to this guy who looked like a hobo in his mid 40s i noticed something strange about him like an unnatural body movement i yell at him asking if he needed any help this guy's turns in my direction and started to walk towards me, the thing is that he had his mouth open like trying to scream but no sound was coming from him. He gets closer and closer at a very slowly pace, and I notice he wasn't walking, he was floating several inches above the ground. I heard girlfriend screaming, I nope the hell out of there with my pants all pissed and run to the car, hit the gas and return to the main highway. To this day I don't know what I saw that day. Girlfriend said she screamed because she saw this guy not only floating but with his clothes covered in blood or something like that, I didn't notice that at the moment. Needless to say I never went that road again. Be like 18 years old. Friend and I live out in the country. Going through forest to gather wood. We're finished and on our way back suddenly blizzard it gets really bad like really really bad like it feels like we're being stabbed with knives made out of ice bad we aren't going to make it back home we find an abandoned cabin in the woods doors open don't care about trespassing because no one's around and we don't want to die go inside to keep warm it doesn't help much we go from feeling like ice knives are stabbing us to just being completely numb all over. We can't start a fire or do anything else. We just keep our jackets wrapped around us and try to get warm. Eventually we pass out. I wake up some time later. Don't know how long it's been. There is now a third person in the room with us. Freaking pale woman with white robes. I must be seeing things. Bits of snow and hail form wherever she breathes. She starts breathing on my friend. I can't quite tell but his skin looks really off equals color. What the actual hell? Freaky woman turns around. She's looking right at me. I still have no idea who this person is but I'm getting really freaked out. She makes a shh motion at me by putting her finger on her lips. She leaves without another word. I don't even know what that was about but I'm still numb from the cold. I fall back asleep. I wake up later. Friend is still asleep. Try to wake him up. It's not working. He feels really cold. I'm getting really worried now. Walk home alone. 
Try to get help once I get back to civilization. Medics come. Tell me he froze to death. I was sick for a while after that, but I got better. I never figured out who slash what that woman was, but I still miss my friends sometimes. Relative has a cabin far north. Only relatively close to a native reserve that's small. Only reason the location exists is for trapping. Cabin sits over small lake with an island. Also two uninhabitable cabins beside it. Relative passes away. We make a trip in his honor. Middle of winter. Very cold. Takes hours to get to the cabin. I can upload a picture of the trail. It's dark when we get there. We always boarded up the cabin. Would need a screwdriver to get the plywood off the door. It's already off when we get there. But doors closed. Okay some natives snuck in to find out if there was rye, racist but in the past that had broken and stole liquor. Everything's pretty fine. Couch is scratched up and a bunch of canned food has teeth marks in it. Smells a bit like rotten meat but there was spoiled food. Looks like a bear did it and someone just forgot to board up. Maybe the wind blew the door shut somehow after. Don't lose much sleep about it and rationalize the situation. Sleep well. Next day one of the other cabin's door is open. Don't know if it was open before because it was night and we didn't look. Cabin doesn't look lived in but it looks like someone ransacked it a little. No tracks in snow to cabin or away. Must have been open for a while. Go fishing on the lake. Thick fog settles in. Fog settles in like this. Keep fishing and taking pictures. It's silent besides other people at cabin. Sounds like something's movie in the fog at some point. Catch a with of rotten food again. Could be the bait, but minnows usually don't stink like that. Keep fishing. Fog settles out. Something catches my eye. Either wolves or large coyotes are running out of the island. Too far to tell. Start packing up fishing gear to go to the cabin because I've been chased by a hungry coyote one winter previous to this one. They aren't coming towards me though. They running away from the island not trying to attack me. Suddenly a screech, almost like a fox, but much louder fills the air. It echoes off both sides of the lake. Can't tell where it came from but I'd guess the island. Drop everything start running to the cabin. My dad's already outside the cabin and started up a skidoo to find me. He asks why I screamed. I tell him it wasn't me. He seems really upset for some reason and keeps insisting it was me. Little irritated but brush it off. We go inside and explore some cut lines with the skidoos. Nothing strange happens. Have a few drinks and call it a night. Don't sleep as well but we are going home tomorrow so it's fine. Smell of rotten meat wakes me up. Need to get out of the cabin. Everyone's still asleep. Decide to take my camera and go fishing. Go outside and head to lake. Stop dead in my tracks. Someone is fishing. They're in all black snow gear and I can't see their face. Can't tell if they're jigging or really twitchy. Take a picture and go back inside. Look out window that overlooks cabin. They're looking at the window. Dead hollow stare with mouth gaping open. They walk away towards island. Happy to leave that day. Nothing else happens. I don't know if it was really a skinwalker or some hermit that was using our crap. Unsettling either way. Not paranormal but here's my nope story. B9. Go to friend's shitty home in his shitty neighborhood for Christmas. Family eating while me and buddy play vidya in his room. Come up with genius idea. We both know my presents are in my mom's car. Now that I think about it, 
it was a really stupid idea since it was only three hours till midnight and if we opened the presents I would get in trouble, but anyways. Get mum's keys. Go outside, walk around apartment. See car, dark figure, and smashed window. Grabbing my goddamn presents. Walk up to him cussing because cussing makes you tough. Second dark figure comes out bang car, raises gun, and freaking shoots. Mrs. Crying like a mother lover. Friend shines light on them. All three book it with presents. Police show up, investigate for two hours then leave. Thanks Obama. And that's how I learned to not visit anyone on Christmas. Be me 10 or 11 years old. Walking with my father after dinner, in the evening. UK winter season so it was dark outside, not too cold though. On our way back home and I look over the road at the opposite pavement. See a strange figure walking almost level with us on the opposite pavement, father doesn't notice. Figure was looking straight ahead and was wearing what looked like regular jeans, sweater, and sneakers, figure looked male. However, noticed something odd about this figure. It had a very pale palette almost completely white, including skin and clothes. Hair was a darker shade, grayish color. But what was stranger was the way it walked. It walked with long slow strides, arms swaying and hunched forward slightly. It looked as though it was gliding and walking in slow motion. Instantly got a creepy feeling watching this did not know what to make of it as I am a very rational person even as a kid, alerted my father. Looked away for a split second to ask my father who that was across the street from us, he knew most of our neighbor, looked back and the figure was gone. Father was uninterested. Continued walking, however, I kept looking over my shoulder and checking surrounding. Didn't hear any house doors open or close, checked the parked cars, all empty. Could not explain where the figure went. Double checked the houses, kept thinking it must have gone into a house. But no lights were on in any of the houses. Major nope.jpg Buried memory.txt Come to slash x, released suppressed memories, you freaking guys. Be me. Around half a year ago, just before Christmas. My room is illuminated with an orange glow from the Christmas light on the window. Wake up at 3 a.m. Look towards brother's bed. Behind him is an odd object waving. Never seen anything like it before, pick related. Blink. It's gone. I just kept telling myself it was my tired eyes playing. It was like some fan with a long handle. Small town in Bavaria. Walk around at night a lot because the internet ruined my life. Market plats empty each time. One creepy small chapel. Lights always on, and point at Jesus statue. Focusing attention on it because always spooks me. Turn corner. Almost bump into someone. Never has this happened in the months I've done this. Listening to iPods so make awkward o noise and walk past without looking at them. Start on main road home. Home is past a long empty field with a dirt road. It had snowed lightly that day. Song ends on iPod. Before new one starts hear snow crunching behind me. Leave headphones and mute iPod. The man is walking 10 feet behind me. No reason other than to follow me. Getting close to home. Home alone parents gone. Not sure if I should walk past it so he doesn't know where I live. Right before I reach my house hear him stop and walk quickly in the opposite direction. Get inside and don't sleep until dawn. I was scared. Not really home alone, but my parents were asleep and my room was on the first floor of the house. Be 15 or 16. Wake up at 4.30 a.m., 
still to this day I like to wake up early. Go on my computer. Wind is really loud outside. Pull open the curtains and see a snowstorm outside. Can't see far down the street through all of the snow falling down and piling on the ground. See this group of people outside. At least twenty of them. Some of them are holding large buckets, pouring a dark liquid on the others. They are all dancing under a street light. What the ever loving fuggeru.rar. Some of them notice me. All of them are eventually looking at me. They all just start walking away. I'm scared but okay, I guess it's alright if they're going away. I kid you absolutely the hell not, there is no snow at all on the ground, aside from the almost melted piles from the previous storm. This is from last night. It's winter here and I like to go cycling in the night amongst the fog and with no one about. It's especially interesting where I live because our property is on the outskirts of town and you have to pass through a large area of thick bush and bumfuck nothing to get anywhere. So that's basically what I like about it. Tonight I decided it would be fun to try out two high intensity lights I just fitted to the bike and helmet, which are essentially acute spotlights that illuminate large distances but only very specifically and without any real peripheral beam. So with these new lights, the ride is pretty cool. There is the same lonely one lane road weaving in and out of the trees and wildlife rustling about on either side of it. Occasionally a kangaroo, totally blinded by the spot will stand frozen on the side or wherever while I pass by and the depth of scrub observable is much further than I'm used to. Generally this is how it is for the trip. Trees, animals, fog, and quiet. There isn't much noise at all out here. Sometimes it's more or less silent and it's nice. But there's this one particular bit I don't like much. It's this little side road on the last stretch before getting back into relative civilization, that descends downhill into a gully before flattening out again for a few kilometers. The temperature drops significantly to somewhere around minus 5, Celsius, and the whole place is shrouded in a much thicker fog utterly destroying visibility down to 30 or so meters with the spot. Usually by this point I'm pretty wrecked too, so it's kind of a slow pass through. Tonight it wasn't a hundred meters and when this jingling sound caught my attention in the right ear and a little back from where I just was. Twisting around, two little staffies, dogs, have darted across the road in playful chase. It's a little odd for them to be out this far in the cold but, I kinda don't give a crap enough for further consideration. They seemed happy enough and trotted back into the darkness before I could bother to stop. Later on things got a little weirder. Because I had the more powerful spot mounted to the helmet, I spent a great deal of time looking sideways at the forest and junk as it passed by. There are a few swampish areas in the gully as well which makes for a pretty theatrical space for observing and things seem to stick out above the mist like mountain tops. But one thing more so than everything else. Just inside the edge of the helmet lights range was another kangaroo, only it wasn't acting like one. It faced away from the light source and was hunched a little, seemingly unfazed by my presence and not at all doing what a kangaroo normally would which is to stand up straight and freeze with rigid ears while it decides on what to do about the incoming threat. No, this thing just stayed exactly as it was, as when it first came into the beam. Obviously, being on the road, I was getting closer before I got any further away and the more it came into view the more confused I was that this kangaroo was quite clearly hunched over with its back to something it should naturally be concerned about. As I became parallel with it however, it didn't quite appear as a kangaroo should. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the fur of an Irish wolfhound, but it's kind of a ratty stray looking coat that makes them appear unkempt and shabby. This thing looked much like that. Kangaroos on the other hand, have a very fine straight fur. The second thing that got me, was its head. It was round and there were no upward pointing ears. It was almost human-looking, 
but more of a newborn or undeveloped human. And so a sobering thought struck me. This was not a kangaroo. I didn't have time to pick up much more detail than that and at this stage had decided I didn't really care. As long as it stayed exactly where it was and let me get far far away. I didn't look back to illuminate the other side of its body either, just kept riding as fast as possible up and out of the gully towards town. That's pretty much it. I decided to stay at my sister's place tonight and go back home in the morning. But I figure, what better time fuel my paranoia by hearing all the crap you guys have been up to in a woods lately. Apologies if the story sucked. I'm not much of a writer.